I'm Winter from the Left Pedal and today we're going to be talking about is the G35 still worth buying? If you stick around you'll find out. So this is my brother's stock G35. Most of the time when you see any G35, it's gonna be modified to some degree, which he plans on doing, but for now, it's just kind of remaining stock. First thing I wanna say is that this car is an automatic, which is a complete change for me because I'm used to driving it manual. And I've noticed when I go to like shift sometimes, I'll go to push the clutch in and there's no clutch there. The transmission for the G35 for an automatic does tend to have some issues. Um, mainly it's the transmission fluid that you have to watch out for when you're switching from like park to reverse when the car first starts up it's really really jerky um, and then whenever you put it into like park or drive or anything like that you can kind of feel it like shake some um, and another thing too is when you're driving and it goes to shift gears it's a lot more intense than probably any other automatic vehicle I've been in this may not be the case for all G35s, but from my personal experience with this car, transmission has been a little rough. So the VQ motor is rated for about 280 horsepower. So realistically, it gets around a little under 250 to the wheels. Performance wise, it does way better than I thought, you know, it ever would. Um, my example for this is a couple days ago I was driving and I was making a right turn and I didn't see anyone coming because there was another car who was turning the direction I just came from and there was actually another car coming my direction so I had to accelerate pretty quickly um, and I didn't think this car would pick up as quick as I did because I don't know a whole lot of information about them. Um, so. The, the other good thing about it too is when I sped up, I didn't feel like I was going to be doing any like Tokyo drifting or whatever. It actually handled really, really well. It can go from 0 to 60 in like around 6 seconds, which is really impressive considering this car is around 3,500 pounds. Now, I mean, if you compare it to other vehicles, it's not, it's not horrible, it's not the heaviest car, but it's also not the lightest car that's ever been invented. Yes, it's a VQ motor, but what's really cool about it is that it gets around, you know, 22 miles per gallon on average, um, which is really impressive for a stock car because other cars, you know, if you put premium gas in it, I, I get around 20 miles per gallon on a good day. So the fact that this gets around 22 um, or more on average is really impressive. There's always one corner I take um, pretty much every day and this car compared to an all-wheel drive car I can tell the difference it feels like the front end just doesn't have as much grip whereas the back end it feels like that's where most of the power is coming from obviously because it's rear wheel drive <laughs> all right so with the styling of the car I actually really like it so it's got a little analog section up here where it's got an analog clock um, it tells you what degree you've got your AC at, um, you know, what direction you're facing. You can actually switch from manual to auto AC. Um, with both of them either way, we found out that you can change the temperature between the driver's side AC and the passenger side AC, which is really cool. So also talking about the rest of the gauges, the dash gauges up here are pretty cool. Um, before I even got in this car, I didn't really know that, you know, you could have the LED lights in here orange. These are lit up orange and it's actually really cool. I, I kind of like it, especially at night when you're driving. It's not intense on your eyes at all. I like the orange. I think it's a cool touch. So with all that being said, I think the interior of this car is ahead of its time for sure. Um, it's, I mean, even though it's got all this stuff on it, it definitely gives it an early 2000s flair. This one's a 2005, so the fact that they have, you know, powered seats, the really cool, like, analog stuff, and how comfortable it is, and I just, I, I like it. So, more about the interior parts of the car. It does have heated seats, um, because the seats are leather. 
it's a really nice luxury to have in these cars because I don't, I've never had heated seats, like ever. Um, so my experience with this car is one time I was going through the Chick-fil-A drive-thru because I was extremely hungry. Um, and I was like, man, it's really hot. Like I'm feeling sticky. It's really gross. And, um, I got my drink from the person who brought me my food and I put it down in the cup holders and I noticed the seat heater was on and I was like, wow, okay, no wonder it's really hot. So I had to turn that off. So they work. <laughs> it's leather all the way around. So including the back seats, which is fine, like when it's cold outside, but when it's really hot, like it is right now, you're basically going to burn your skin off when you're trying to get in the seats. It's only a two door. So when you're trying to get into the back of a car, you're touching those hot seats and not only are you going to burn the skin off the bottom of your legs, you're going to probably burn the skin of your hands too. Um, so you'll be hurting in multiple places. I don't know why I brought that up, but it's there. <laughs> I want to point out that there is a battery issue with the car. So it tends to drain the battery after like three days or more if you don't drive it. So I've actually looked it up and the solution is the CD changer in the back of the car. That's actually what's causing the issue and you can unplug it and it should be fine. Um, but if you look at it as like a daily car, there shouldn't be an issue because if you're driving it every day, it shouldn't drain the battery. Um, we've even bought a new battery for this car and it's still drained. Aside from most of the issues that I've already pointed out, the car does run pretty smoothly um, with the stock transmission and the stock suspension and pretty much everything being stock, it's really not that bad of a car. Don't get me wrong. I haven't minded driving it for the past few days while I'm waiting on the beam to get some tires. But if you're looking at it as like a daily car, it's a really good car to get. And I think it's pretty reliable, to be honest. luxury sports car it gets good mileage it handles well the interior is super sweet so if you're looking for a good daily g35 is definitely the way to go i'm winter from the left pedal be sure to like and subscribe and we'll catch you guys next time bye